Hello everyone, welcome to my quest for a flat 3D printer bed. I've made quite a few changes and adjustments, especially to the gantry and also to the distance sensor or the distance probe, and the best I've been able to achieve is 0 0.130, which really isn't all that great. So I've decided to buy an entirely new printer bed. This is from Precise Printer Parts, and uh, it's a nice solid thick piece of aluminum and this is how it looks when you open the box it's packed quite well here we've got a thank you and I'm assuming you saw the sticker made in the USA attached here is a little Ziploc bag which has uh, some screws some bolts that come with a plate it's all the bolts you need except for the bolts to mount the plate to the printer frame Wow, look at this thing. It's a little bit hard to tell in the lighting and with the camera, but it looks like a mirror. It's actually amazing looking. Uh, the machining is absolutely beautiful. And even look the lettering and uh, the pre-cut markers for the different size uh, heaters that you may be attaching. You can see here it's made for the Voron 2.8 uh, excuse me, the Voron 2.4 and the Trident. Um, this is a 350 millimeter plate. And um, again, it's just beautifully machined. It's got all the holes pre-made uh, for the thermal fuse as well as ground. And um, it just looks fantastic. I'm really impressed. Here, we'll flip it over to take a look at the other side which is the side we opened the box. Hopefully this camera will get in focus at some point. Um, but you can see the writing that's machined in. It's, it's beautiful. The one interesting add-on that comes standard with this bed is uh, there's a groove cut for a thermistor. And the idea here is you insert it, hook it up to the MCU, and this actually is the top of the bed. So while normally you read the temperature of the heater in the bottom of the bed, um, in here we'll now be able to actually read the temperature at the surface of the bed. I also ordered a brand new Canovo bed heater directly from the company. and. Uh, didn't think it'd be reasonable to attempt to pull off the old one. Um, it's glued quite securely. And uh, so, hey, we've got a new one to put on the bed. I also ordered a brand new 350 millimeter filament um, PEI bed and magnet. I've used filament before, um, at least their products as it relates to the printer bed. And I've been really happy with their flexible uh, magnetic sheets. Uh, they've always been consistent. The quality's been really good. I highly recommend them, and I'm looking forward to using it on my Voron. It's got a little barcode here you can scan with your phone, which takes you to uh, to the video. It includes a cleaning cloth, decal, and some alcohol swabs to help clean the plate after touching it. Then we've got some additional nice touches here. This is my first time ordering a double-sided sheet from Filament, um, but as you can see, the rough side, which we're looking at here, is very even, very nice. Here's the magnet attached to the back. It's got the 3M 300 ad adhesive, which is great for attaching to a bed plate on a hot 3D printer. Um, it is wrapped in plastic, and this is the smooth side as well. and. Uh, it's just a beautifully finished plate, which is what I expect based on my prior experience. So one of my first mistakes here, I'm about to connect the heating pad to the plate. Uh, <laughs> I reminded myself multiple times I was going to do this last and here I am doing it first. 
uh, please put the magnet on first. Um, you'll have a much easier time later on. I think what happened here, I was looking at the guidelines ground into the plate, and I just, I don't know, I had to use them. Also, I did wipe down the plate uh, carefully with iso alcohol. Again, to make sure there's no grease, fingerprints, or anything like that that might cause a problem with the heater sticking or the adhesive working properly. I use some pieces of cardboard here just to keep any weight off of um, the thermistor, the heater. And then I use some old um, f flexible print beds and some items to weigh this down. Once that's dry, I flip it over and install the uh, thermal fuse. I put a little bit of heatsink compound and, uh, and then just use the screw and washer that came with the print bed. So to check for the flatness of the plate before really working on anything else, as in putting the magnet, um, I wanted to check just to make sure the plate was flat and to see just how flat it is. And so um, here it is, it is bolted down and uh, I'm uh, building a mesh right now, or rather the printer's building a mesh, so we can take a look and see just how flat this bed is. And so the reading I get is 0 0.058, which is a huge difference from my old bed. Uh, this is really quite flat. Again, a testament to the great machining. So before uh, attaching the magnet, um, I need to insert the uh, thermistor. The bed also comes with two additional bolts and these bolts go all the way in the back of the plate. Um, there's two special holes drilled for them and these end up being the backstops for the flexible magnetic sheet which is super nice because it is a pain in the butt normally to place it on. I decided to save some time and not show you um, <laughs> attaching the magnet to the bed. I did that already and here I am wiping it down with a damp cloth just to make sure it sticks really well. And then I uh, put a plate on top and I put some weights on top as well and I let this dry uh, to make sure it's as flat as can be. So I ran another bed mesh to see where I ended up here with the new plate and new magnet. And I get a reading of 0.17. This is worse than my old plate. <laughs> and the only conclusion I can come to is it's because of the way I attach the magnet to the bed. Um, I think in all the videos, uh, everyone tends to be really casual about this. And really, you have to be really careful about this. So after a good night's rest and some time to think about this, again, came to the conclusion, it must be how I attach the magnet. So I gotta remove it. So here I've got what amounts to plastic razor blades. I don't wanna scratch this brand new, beautiful aluminum bed. And I've heated up um, this to 120 degrees Celsius and uh, wearing some gloves to try and protect my hands and I'm going to scrape this thing off. I've got the bed heated to 120 degrees Celsius because looking at the uh, 3M's documentation for this uh, glue that's used to attach this to the bed, uh, it seems like at higher temperatures the glue softens. And that definitely seems to be the case here. As you can see, I'm starting to make some headway. The major problem, of course, is this glue is still stuck to the aluminum plate and uh, it's pretty hard to get off. I tried some alcohol and alcohol did absolutely nothing to it. And uh, of course, to use a chemical, I had to let it cool down. And of course, once I let it cool down, the glue actually got harder again making the alcohol absolutely useless. So it turned out Gugon 
was the chemical that worked. You could see the alcohol, the clear on the right, and the gugon on the left. But the gugon would form this interesting jelly <laughs> um, once it started to melt away the um, the adhesive, the 3M adhesive. And uh, as it turned into that jelly, you could scrape it off really easily. In fact, it took almost no effort. And uh, even more interesting is this gel would continue to work throughout the play plate and just grow and grow and grow as it absorbed more of the adhesive. So it took a little while uh, moving the gel around and letting it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes before scraping and moving forward to the next part on the plate. But it worked. At this point, all the gelatin's off, and for the most part, and here I'm just using more Goo Gone and the paper towel to get the last bits of any goo or adhesive that might be left on this plate. Of course, this is oil. <laughs> this is, we're gonna have to work really hard to make sure we get all of this off. So now I went over the plate, or I'm going over the plate with, uh, dishwashing liquid detergent Dawn with a little bit of water as well. You gotta have the water or it doesn't work so well. And here I'm scrubbing the plate really well and actually multiple times to make sure I'm able to get all the oil, the citrus oil and everything else off the plate. Make sure you clean out the groove for the thermistor and also all the holes uh, where the screws go in, especially the ones you're gonna be using and you want to clean them all out anyway because you don't want any of the goo to drip somehow or make its way onto uh, the heating pad that's beneath because it would release that glue. Now that the plate is clean, uh, I've moved over to a glass table. I'm using a glass table because it's half an inch thick. Uh, it's very, very flat. In fact, it's the flattest thing I can find. And uh, one of the things I realized, even with my previous bed, was I used my wooden bench. And in hindsight, my wooden bench is not that flat. And as far as I can tell, uh, the waves or curvature or unflatness in my previous plate and magnet seem to somewhat follow very, very minor issues in the bench I was using. So this is the flattest thing I can find. Um, here you can see I'm attaching the magnet, but we're going to flip this over, sit it down on the bare glass, and add some weight on the back. The heaviest, widest thing I could find um, <laughs> actually ends up being my old printer bed. And so um, here I'm going to sit it on top. I'm going to throw a little more weight on top of it just as well, uh, just for good measure. And then I'm going to let this cure. Um, but at least now my plate has consistent weight and it's being pushed against a very, very flat glass table, which should resolve any of the flatness issues. So I mounted the plate with the magnet, ran another bed mesh, and what were the results? So I end up with 0 0.0747. It's not quite uh, 0 .5, 0 0.058, but this is much better. And it all came down to making sure the surface 
that you uh, use to force the magnet onto the aluminum plate and where you get the adhesive to cure has to be very, very flat. You really need to make sure of that. And uh, you should see a huge improvement in your bed. I actually wish I would have done this to my old one. Anyway, thank you for watching and please subscribe. I almost forgot uh, the precision printer parts plate. Um, I can't recommend it more highly. I mean, it's been great. And the embedded thermostat in the surface of the plate is really kind of interesting. Uh, notice here how long it takes for the actual surface of the bed to get even close to the, um, the temperature that's normally recorded. But what's even more interesting is the two never ever actually equal each other. And so I'm finding uh, seeing the actual temperature of the surface is a lot more useful than I thought it would be. Anyway, I highly recommend it. Um, I recommend both the um, the solid aluminum plate from Precision uh, Printer Parts, and then I also highly recommend the, the filament uh, PEI bed as well. Thank you, and please subscribe.